for me, the sign of a really good play is when you're sitting in the audience and you actually want to leave your seat in the audience and go down onto the stage and join in. And um, I thought, could, is it possible to make a play where from the very start you're joining in, from the very start you're one of the people who are engaged in the action? Just make a way for the key. After you have the key. I know that for children particularly, that's a very powerful device to actually be immersed in, in a story and to be, um, to be part of the adventure. And that suits very much the um, theme of the Lost World, which is about finding heroic deeds to do in an age when all the heroic things seem to have been done already. I'm going to! What? No! Run! Ah! No! <laughs> we were very keen that the, um, each audience member should have their own particular um, experience. So they, um, there isn't a set route through the play. Um, there isn't enough time for you to see everything. Roger that. Go, 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 go. Let's see what happens. Are we going to come in here? And in fact, the real adventure starts when you leave the theatre and sit down with your friends or your family and say, so what did you see, where did you go? And you try and join all the bits together to, to make it make sense. We're kind of like explorers, but almost also, like audience members in a way. We're, mm, we believe, the premise is that we believe all the Lost World relics have been stored in the old pig and that's why it's shut. But we haven't been in there ourselves, so we've invited 120 people each night for a couple of weeks <laughs> uh, to come and explore with us. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Lost World. to go out and search for heroic adventures, deeds, things that will, that will give us a sort of daring do that the, the Victorian adventurers still had. It's careful, it could be dangerous, it could be, it could be a dinosaur. <laughs> I'm going to go in, I'm going to have a look. Here we go. I'm going in. Be careful, just, just in case. Come in, come in, come in, come in. <laughs> 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 I think it's Ross. Ross. So this is a play which hopefully enkindles in the audience that kind of sense of adventure, that sense of discovery. Um, just as when you read a book um, for the first time, you, you're slowly discovering the story as it happens around you. Um, so in this play, you're making the story happen by interacting with the various exhibits, the various people, the puppets, whatever it might be. For children, it's very important the stories have beginnings, middles and ends. So we've um, set a beginning and we've set an end, um, although the end is left as a, on a cliffhanger. Um, and the middle section, if you were to you know, travel around in a particular order, you, you'd be able to make up some kind of story from it. Every time you find something of interest, anything at all, anything that could be evidence, come and find me. We very quickly found a, um, a subplot to the story which involves uh, the Bristol City Council and um, so we now have some people who've been trapped in the exhibit for two years and they've started to regress the state of, of living in the lost world. We're ape men. We're a combination from the book of the missing links. The idea is that, um, that five Bristol City Council workers got lost in the lost world when they were moving all the crates and stuff full of dinosaurs. And um, we've been in here for two years and we have regressed and become this missing it's a, link. It's a process of reverse evolution which we're calling devolution. Yes. There's hope that we might be able to re-educate them and reintegrate them into society. Missy Council, may I help you? <laughs> Liza, for example, thinks that she is Victorian yeah. Gladys. So she is wearing Victorian Gladys costume. I'm making a little lace collar for myself. So I mean, yeah, lace and ribbons and fancy buttons and uh, eventually, hopefully, she'll look quite Victorian. Fast advance, take no! <laughs> I'm an evil colonial overlord. Uh, I've gone down into the basement uh, and I believe that I am the high protector and in charge of all of the lost world. Now listen here! 
You'll stay there and you'll do what I say, and what's more, not one single scrap of evidence is going to leave with you. Uh, it's a body roll, basically. People can just come and discover us, and we don't have any language currently, so um, whatever people want to teach us, they can, and we pick up various things. Pick up language, yeah. Are you on Facebook? <laughs> Facebook! 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 Are you? Facebook! It's coming back to him. Facebook! Um, there are some emails in your inbox. <laughs> <laughs> email! The fact that we get to work with actual dinosaurs is yeah. pretty much the most exciting thing in the world. Like, yeah. how much cooler can a project get than working with dinosaurs? Oh, it's beautiful. I'm really worried about disturbing it from its mother. It's like we've gone back to being five. Yeah, it is like being five. I, I describe my work as family theatre rather than young people's theatre um, because I think you should be able to go you know, a child and their parents and their grandparents and their great-grandparents should all be able to go together and experience that together. Stop <laughs> it! That said, there is something special about a young audience and they are active. Thank you very much for showing your home. I'm going to go now. Bye! They're immediately responsive. Oh. And they're not necessarily polite. Um, so a, a young audience, if they notice something they don't like, they will comment on it. If, conversely, if it's something they do like, they will you know, absolutely go along with it. I wanted to, to create a piece that's got space for people to observe, for people to interact, for people to lead, um, so that they can be in charge of the experience. Um, a piece that's got space in it. <laughs> We can tell them the story, but they are actually doing it alongside the hearing it as well. There was a rucksack and some bullets and a cigar belonged to someone from an dented looking furnace. We started by identifying what was going to be in the space. For example, the, well, the, the different exhibits that have broken out and the living exhibits. And we worked on ways, different ways for each one of interacting with them. Um, so, for example, it, it might be discovering something questioning the audience on what is it, what could it be, what do you think it is, identifying it, going, ah, oh, I've read about that, that's in the book, come over here, let's have a look at it, reading a passage from the book to flesh out sort of some of the mystery and excitement about it, make sure everything's clear and precise. Um, and with the younger children, I think it's, it's great to try and capture that, that spirit of adventure. Look out. Is there a pterodactyl up there? I'm worried about the mother being... Okay. Angus, what's that? What? Auditions, we were looking for people who were open to possibilities, who weren't afraid to admit that they didn't know the answer, um, who were good at sort of spinning out a very little material to make it go a long, long way, um, and people, actors who liked asking questions rather than giving answers. Essentially, we're going in there with questions but no answers, as it were, and hopefully the audience will be able to provide answers, and that's why the show will be different. The trick is to to try to see it with fresh eyes each time, um, and also through the eyes of the audience. You get new ideas like every time something new happens. If somebody's got a sparkly earring or a boy's got a, a bum bag or something. Oh, no. Oh. Yeah. yeah. The sign of ultimate success is where you don't have to do much at all, and they are discovering it, and you're just sort of guiding them here and there. It's a, it's a fantastic learning tool for children theatre in all sorts of bizarre and different ways. Okay, let's try. Eight men, destroy the evidence! <laughs> 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 But mostly it's a bit just a bit about playing and it's about getting the actors to um, just kind of push their own performance versions of themselves to a point where they're, they're not quite real. Um, because that's important for the audience, they have to also become not quite real, they have to become adventurers, explorers, um, people looking for the truth. The whole thing is pretty bonkers but then the book is pretty bonkers. Um, so Toby's sort of gone along with that. One! Two, three, four! Oh!